Justin here, Peterson Electric. This is about that Siemens box again for Mario Model 1 Tesla um, vehicle. And I want to explain to you real quickly that um, this video was done in March of 18, 2019. This is a second video of the 12 code violations that I found as a contractor. And this is not even a buddy for beer. This is not um, uh, an uncle, a neighbor, a brother. And this is not even a homeowner. This is an electrician who hired an apprentice to do the work here in Loveland, Colorado. I may still decide to give them a call. I'm really concerned about the fact of why they wired it this way. And here are the violations I found before I wanted the homeowner to move forward and, and do any work. Okay, so I came in here to hopefully get out of the wind for you guys and so you can hear me better. This is the handbook of the 2017 NEC code book. Some of you guys out there are inspectors and you like to give me a hard time because I don't show you exact provision of code. Understand that when I'm giving you the provision of code, I don't want to give everything because I don't want homeowners doing this type of work. It's really not, they're not qualified to do it. And I don't care if you did it 30 years ago, 10 years ago, two years ago, and you went to college and now you're an engineer or whatever. This is for people in the trade. And so I'm hoping to help other tradesmen. Anyway, so first chapter going to be is 100, talks about continuous duty, three hours or more. Now, when the Tesla charger charges, it is definitely right under three hours. Understand the deprivation drops off right at another 20%. Uh, it drops down to 20% for that last portion of the charging in the last hour because it's almost done its duty. So really, that is a, um, a part of the code that can be gray when you're dealing with, is it three hours or more? Now, if you get a box and you don't have a more than a 110 plug-in, you are definitely more than three hours if you're running this thing 13 to 14 hours. Uh, it's gonna be hard on that circuit that you put in, especially if it's not dedicated. The other parts of the code violations I saw about this So it was raceways. We were concerned that they didn't have a mini strap out there. That's 225.22. It talks about having drainage. Does it say a quarter uh, inch gap when you deal with a mini strap? No, but this is common sense. It refers to 230.53 as well. That when you're dealing with a raceway to drain, it's still the same thing, even if it's a service feed. Service feed is different than branch circuit, but it's still the same common sense. A couple other code violations that I saw. Hang in there with me. Okay. So an overcurrent protection, if you share a neutral, I have not found that one yet. If you guys wanna email me or whatever, that's fine. Um, I know it's in here, but when we have two breakers shared with a common neutral, we have to have a common tie handle trip that circuit. And, um, Oh, and by the way, when you're picking your overcurrent protection, you want to be in 240.6. These talk about your standard breaker and fusible sizes. If you're in also 240.5, it's talking about what your wire's rated at if it's under a certain size, usually of a six gauge. Um, but I will look for that neutral and um, hopefully find that sometime later. Uh, the other thing that I did see, oh, multi-circuit branch circuits. I believe it's talking about here. Okay, it's gonna be 240.15. But we also wanna look at the identification. They used a lot of different color wire, like white for black on grounding conductors, and they used then also a um, number six. They had it all red. Uh, the code is pretty specific. Some inspectors give us grace if all we have is just black wire for number six. But identification on grounding conductors, it talks about it in 210.5C as well. And that's really right here. It's interesting how they refer it to you. Um, so they talk about these voltages um, and any size wire. I think it's under a number six. Yeah, branch circuit identification. Of each ungrounded conductor of four gauge or larger to be identified and terminated and tagged. 
okay? But when you're dealing with smaller wires of 14, 12 gauge, uh, 10 gauge, they typically want the whole conductor to be insulated in the same color. Another common mistake I saw about this wiring installation is gonna put us closer to, let's see if our grounding was correct. 251.22, he was feeding a panel at 60 amps, he needed a number 10, he has six, that's good. I upped it to 100 amp, I had to have a number eight gauge copper, I put in a six, so I'm good there. Now, the other thing I saw, the mistake that they made, was outside installation. Talks about our slip sleeves coming up, 18 inches of burial for 240 volt. And that's gonna talk about that in 300.5, that we are in all locations and we're typically in a residential situation. And so we're gonna be in an 18 inch column. Okay, so this talks about our direct berry. They were six and a half inches at 240 volt. That's nowhere allowed. Securing and supporting your straps and raceways. I don't agree they did that on the other side, so that might be number 13 violation I've seen. Above grade wet locations, you gotta pay attention to 300.9. You're supposed to be sealing your holes, like we said at the hot tub, different temperatures, 300.7. Expansion fittings, 300.5B, 300.7B. B. You didn't have the expansion fittings coming out of the ground, so that's gonna pull apart. You also have to pay attention to, um, I found another one. When you're bending your wire, oh, you need to pay attention to temperature limitations of your conductors, and I'll show you that here in a minute. Um, but there was a really cool picture to show you something. I think it was 312. Yes. Right here, when you're bending wires into a panel, you cannot just bend them and loop them. You can do a, a gentle loop, but the way they had them bent in there, I couldn't even get the panel cover to shut. So that'd be code number violation 14, and that's in 312.6. But then the other thing we had to pay attention to is make sure if you guys are thinking of running this, you're not allowed to take NM cable, article 334, I believe. Let me see if I'm right. No, I'm wrong. Three, um, I don't want this video to be too long. Uh, 334, I was right. Um, you cannot, for use is permitted, it talks about, but use is not permitted. You are not allowed to go outside with this wire anymore. It is not allowed to be in a damp and a wet location. 334.12B4. I call it BS because some of this gets a little bit too much. But the point of the matter is, is right here, you cannot put this in a conduit anymore. And nor are you going to get that in unless you put in a one inch. But you're supposed to be using over here in 310.15B16 that it states that a number six copper is good up to starting at 75 degrees. But we have duration factors. Do we have a neutral? No. Do we have how many current carrying conductors in the conduit? Six to nine. Uh, that talks about it over here. Uh, neutral and then six to nine current carrying conductors for adjustment factor. Let's see where that is. Right here. No, I have three. I have two conductors that are current carrying. So I don't have to worry about any of that. Do I have outside temperature? Yes, but it's not on a roof, so I don't have to worry about that. So really just, it's for its value. That wire is rated 75 degrees Celsius. But keep in mind, if it has an asterisk, then you got to be in 240.4D like I showed you earlier, and it shows your limitations. But as soon as you get above an 8 gauge, they assume you're in a more of a commercial wire, so it gives you a higher rating. But still, you still have limitations in Article 110.14 that talks about anything that will be smaller than a 1 gauge has to be derated at 60%. And 75 degrees Celsius is automatically assumed a one gauge or larger. So if we have to automatically go to 60 degrees Celsius, that means we cannot manipulate that wire more than 55 amps. 
So again, guys, uh, when you look at most circuits, you're trying to be 80% of that circuit. But when you're putting in a THWN-2 rating, which I told you is 75 degrees Celsius rating, that or, or six, uh, 90 degrees Celsius rating at 75 amps, that wire is going to be stout at 75 amps. Your weakest link is going to be your breaker or your Siemens box. Or a guy sticking it in that little Siemens part when you're trying to tighten it down with a little baby flathead screwdriver. I really wish they'd get a nice torque screw, uh, Phillips head on that. So really make sure it tightens down like you do hot tubs. But anyways, guys, so this is kind of a general thing that I've been showing you. Um, yeah, those code violations. Oh, there's one other thing I wanted to show you I did find. It was in Article 322, I think. No, I'm wrong. I think it was, um, oh, I showed you that raceway drainage. Yeah, I did show you guys that. Um, but there was one thing. I found it in 314 under cabinets. And cabinets talk about electrical power panels, uh, wet and damp location, eighth of an inch gap. But it also talks about in here, it doesn't say the word Myers Hub, but how you seal that properly at the top of the panel. You're going to be 314.15 for electrical device junction boxes. And cabinets, excuse me, was in 312. And 312 talks about that quarter inch right there, 312.2 uh, quarter inch gap. So anyways, I'm getting long here. But yeah, so there's at least 14 violations on this from an electrician. So if you know who this is and you've seen my video, feel free to email me. I'll be more than happy to tell you those court articles. But again, um, not just because a guy has a license doesn't mean he's educated. We do go through very extensive